So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about social media measurement in uh, Google Analytics. We want to think about first what is available. What can we actually get out of Google Analytics? What are the options that uh, are here? And, and this is the analyst track. I'm going to try and think about the idea of, of how we approach this from an analyst point of view. But the reality is this is one where we also need to think a bit about data collection. It's not something that is inherently available. It's not something like uh, on our website tracking. As we know, most of the social media conversations are going to take place essentially not on our site. And so we wanted to split those into two different categories. Conversations that are happening about our site and when the social interactions that are happening on our site. And so we're going to talk a little bit about data collection. We're going to kind of mix in the, the tools that are available to us to pull in data into Google Analytics. <clears throat> talking about event tracking tracking social, but also the idea of social segmentation. How can we understand what the users are doing who are socially engaged? Campaign tracking, and of course, the idea of mobile. <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the future and, and how this quickly, quickly evolving uh, medium can be tracked and, and things that are on the horizon. So we talk a little bit about why. Why are we here in the first place? Why are we talking about uh, social? And I, I think this is probably something I don't have to convince you folks that we want to track social, but it is kind of some staggering numbers. And we talk about the idea that four out of five internet users are visiting uh, social networks and blogs. And I think just the number uh, is increasing. I think this one is amazing. When we talk about the internet, there's there's been uh, so many firsts. When you look at the, the uh, amount of things in the last five years, in the last 10 years that have been uh, you know, sort of record-breaking. Even things like uh, the tablet, you know, the, the first iPad was you know, the device that had, I think, the highest uh, uptake of any device in the history of man. And when you look at kind of, you know, some of these numbers, they're staggering. But, but to look at the, the, the just straight hockey stick here, I mean, normally when I see hockey sticks and data, I assume that something has gone wrong, something's gone asymptotic. But, but really, the uptake uh, compared to anything else is, is just phenomenal. And we, I keep thinking that we can't keep doing things that are uh, you know, record-breaking and have a higher uptake than previous, but uh, I keep being wrong. So when we look at the, the rise of social, it's pretty clear that, that this is up there and one of the top things that we want to be able to track. Unfortunately, as analysts, we do have a challenge. It's not particularly the, the technology and the ability to track and understand what's happening on social, quite frankly, is just not caught up to where we are in the web analytics world. We've had years and years on, on the website to, to really perfect that craft, or you know, maybe not perfect it, but uh, certainly uh, try to understand it. And on the, on the social side, we're a bit scrambling to keep up. The first thing that we kind of think about are the ways that we can track these events. And ultimately, uh, that's really kind of how I think about these is, is events. When, things, when we're doing things on our, our site, we can do that a couple different ways. And, and I'm going to start right off with the one that's uh, the newest here, Track Social. This is essentially a specific event, right? This is a, a way that we can track events inside of there that are specific to the idea of social. And, and it's really no different than a normal event tracking that we would do in analytics, other than it has a specific set of reports that are designed around the idea that you're doing something social and a little bit different way that we're going to call this. So when we, when we talk about track social, it's effectively tracking social interaction analysis. And we're going to be able to compare these interactions across our multiple networks. right? So we want to be able to understand how our Facebook, how our LinkedIn, how our Twitter, how these are all interacting in the same set of reports and in, in a standardized way. So we can attempt to get some kind of, of way to compare one versus the other and how we can compare this back to the traffic that it generates. When we talk about implementing track social, it's, it's very similar to how we would normally track events. What we're all we're going to do is simply call track social, very similar to how we would call track event. And what we've got is the idea of the network, this is going to be our first um, component of that, the social action itself, so whether this is a like, whether it's a tweet, an unlike, uh, a share, some other action that's taking place on there, and then we also want to talk about optional targets and the optional path. So example, if I did track social on Facebook and a like, and I didn't use any of the optional characters, that's what we'd have here. So if we're not specifying that, then the optional target is going to just default to the URL of whatever page the visitor's on when they click that thing. So if I share this content, it's just going to take whatever page I'm currently on and submit that as part of there if I don't specifically point it to something else. Optional page path is the same kind of thing. It's going to do the URI without the host name on there so we can understand exactly what the URI was uh, that gets submitted. And so this is uh, pretty helpful in terms of we have the ability actually to specify other content if we want to than the page it's on. 
So most of the time we'll probably leave this off, but it is helpful in the cases where we want to actually specify a home page or, or another version uh, other than the specific page that it's on, especially if we have query string parameters, any other types of things that are there where we want to try and consolidate these and help our measurement. I always try and think about this from the reporting side. What do I want to see on the reporting side? And then try to make sure that my tracking, get that data as clean as possible by the time we entered in the first place. Facebook and Twitter, obviously the two big heavyweights when it comes to our social media. And they require a little bit of extra effort when we talk about being able to track those. Uh, the first one we talk about here at Facebook, there actually is a way we can come in here and use the Facebook event protocol. So we can still use track social. So we're still tracking social here and social Facebook and share, but we're doing it within the Facebook framework. So Facebook gives us specific listeners that we can do uh, to understand how those events are being tracked. Same thing we talk about on Twitter over here. What we essentially are doing here is, is using the interface here that we can bind to these events. And so we're still calling track social. It's still the same way that we get the data into Google Analytics. But uh, we have to take advantage of, of the tools that give us a little bit of insight to what's happening uh, on the Twitter and the, uh, the uh, Facebook widgets that are actually you know, hosted within our page. So looking specifically about that, if we want to track this share link, if we want to track the shares that are happening on our site, the important thing here, what this gives us, is not just the ability to track that the button was clicked. When we talk about events, yes, I can track an event when the, when the button is clicked, but by integrating in with the frameworks themselves, there's an important difference. Here, I can understand whether it was actually successful or not. So it's not just a matter of somebody clicked on the like button. It's did they actually log in, make the connection, and did the like actually go through? So what we're tracking here is actual successful events, not just attempted events. Is that clear? By integrating with the framework, we actually have the ability to only return that in the case that the success and the connection actually went through. And so I think that's an important difference when we really understand what the metrics are. We talk about the idea that there's no good or bad metrics. They're only, you know, they are what they are. But it's important that we understand what is and isn't being tracked when we do these things. Just because I click on that share button doesn't mean I actually went ahead and logged in. And we especially see this on social networks where it does require logins. It requires people to do it. First of all, they have to have the account. And then second of all, they have to actually decide, yes, I do want to connect this back. I want to accept you know, whatever permissions there might be. And there's a fair amount of drop off. Sometimes it can actually be worth measuring the difference. If I do an event when the button is clicked versus watching what happens here, where it actually goes all the way through with the like, and we can see what that drop off is. How many people attempt to do the share? How many people attempt to do the like, but then don't actually go all the way through with it for whatever reason? We can measure that drop off as well. For Facebook? Yeah, no, you have to use the event listeners. Yep. So how do we see this on the reporting side? There are actually specific reports for track social. Uh, these are set up, and this is part of the benefit that you get with the idea of uh, the social tracking is, is you get a specific set of reports that understand what you're doing is social. So it understands that it's something that's on a page, that you're clicking uh, a like or a share or one of the other events that are there. It's going to understand how that interactivity goes. So we can see the social source. We can see the number of actions. We can so do secondary dimensions on these. And we can set this up to be either social source technical difficulties here. Or we can set it up to be social source and action as well. So we can understand these two together. Very similar to how we would see a source or a medium and then a source medium report. Same kind of thing here. We can understand whether we want just the action, just the source, or what most of us probably want to see most of the time is what was the source and what were we doing. So if we're doing a Facebook like, Facebook unlikes, we want to understand what those are happening uh, there so we can compare them right in the same place. Again, that flexibility to slice and dice our data within Google Analytics but in the social framework. We also want to understand how, how effectively how shareable our content can be. And so we can measure this in terms of how many viewers of that comment are noted on the, the socially engaged side of things. And what this is effectively measuring is when we, we have the ability to have content on our site, 
How shareable is this? How, how much are people actually engaging in the social media options that we put up there? We put the, the add this widget, we put tons of these buttons at the bottom, and, and some of the question comes down to is I add more and more of these buttons and clutter up more of my pages, is, is anybody actually using this content, or these, these options? Is anybody actually sharing these things? Are they sharing them over which networks, and which content that I'm putting out there, which of these blog posts is actually getting people uh, you know, interested enough to share it. And so these are the kinds of things that we want to understand on these particular uh, ones. So we can understand whether people are socially engaged and not socially engaged. And so this effectively just cuts us down to are people actually taking advantage of those on this particular bit of content? Are people socially engaged in this, uh, this particular um, site? Okay. We look at this, this is the number of times these social actions have occurred on a given page. And so we understand the pages over here on the left, and then we can understand how those social actions break down. So we can do this when we understand the social Twitters, the shares, the plus ones, likes, and, and whatnot per broken down by page. And so one thing I want to point out on this is that when we talk about these, if we talk about going back to the original blog page and these individual pages, we're going to have to go back to that idea of the optional parameters and make sure that we are sending the page that we think we are. So if I click the like, if I click those pages and I'm sending back the default URL versus the original home blog page. So you want to decide there and make sure your data collection is sending back credit to the page that you think it is so that when you actually do this comparison, remember this is based on whether or not you included that or whether you let it go to the default. And so make sure we know what's being sent back so that when we look at the reports on here, we're able to actually compare these through here properly. Yeah? What was the, uh, the reasoning for the nomenclature of the uh, network, social dash, Twitter, social dash, instead of just the name? Was there a purpose for that? Yeah, because when we also think about these two, we want the idea of being able to understand how social is comparing to things like email or direct traffic or PPC traffic. And, you know, if we're thinking about it from a business point of view, how are we generating the visitors that come to our site. And so we want to be able to do things like searches on social and just understand how social as a medium in and of itself compares to CPC or email or those things. So, you know, again, this, this is all moving extremely fast. And so it really depends on your organization and how much of this, you know, what kinds of reports you want to see. How this. So I, I think it's, it's very important to line up what you're trying to get and then how we implement it because the, the kind of standards just aren't really there yet. For me, I think that's, that's the main idea is to do I don't know if it's on here, but yeah, social dash and then the network so that I can do a, a quick report that says, okay, filter me for all my social ones and then everything that has social in the front of it versus, okay, I want to see all my Twitter stuff and then I can filter all the Twitter ones. By having network, or, you know, medium dash network, I capture both of those things. When we look at the social ones under and we go visitors, social, we're going to see social actions and social sources and, and engaged or not. Those are pretty much our three options that are there. Okay, so comparing our content and understanding what the different social actions that happen on these with this uh, pivot chart here, and understanding of this by page. We can also look at it by social entity, but uh, by page is an interesting way for us to look at how is our content doing? Which of these ones are we finding to be most shareable? <clears throat> Okay, when we do this one, it's going to show these ones per page, so we can take a look at that, click it out, understand that this was the particular site that went there. In this case, it's the blog homepage. One other thing we want to think about is the idea of segmentation. And so we really want to understand how can we segment out the traffic that's there. And, and I think, again, we, we think about social in a few different ways. The first one is what, uh, what we've just gone through is what on my site? is shareable? What on my site am I doing that people find appealing enough to take place? How much of these, these in particular actions that people are doing, uh, by which network, by which one uh, are they doing, are they liking, are they unliking? That's kind of content focused. What I also want us to think about is visitor focused. And so we think about segmenting our actual visitors to understand what types of people come in who are using these buttons, what types of people come in from different, different uh, social networks, and being able to compare those versus my CPC traffic, versus my email traffic. What are they doing when they're there? How much are they worth? What kind of goals are they doing? And so when we think about segmentation, I also want us to think about the user side of things, not just the content side, and understand which of those, those uh, user bases are there. So we talk about segmenting social traffic here, we have the ability to do, first and foremost, sources. 
So we'll just kind of start with the basics. How, how are people getting to our site? Are they coming to our site from Facebook? Are they coming from Reddit? Are they coming from Twitter? And understand the sources that are coming through there. So simple advanced segments that are going to include sources on this. And we can look through our source medium report and understand all the different networks that are sending traffic in uh, via the source medium report to see what percentages of our traffic are coming through there? Which are the big networks that are bringing traffic? What are they actually doing when they get there? What's the bounce rate? I can flip over to our e-commerce reports, to our goal reports, and understand which of these ones are my most valuable traffic. And that's really uh, one of those things that you'll see on social, probably more than other, other sources, is that the disparity between volume of traffic versus quality of traffic can be very high. And so we really want to think about where am I generating numbers from, but also where are we getting quality from? We don't necessarily just want the looky-loos that click through and, and follow through, especially depending on if your business is direct response. If you're trying to actually get some goals accomplished, get something sold, have some kind of uh, success metric on your site, then it's critically important to do that, especially on the social side where the, the quality of traffic definitely varies. So a quick channel comparison, if we actually do uh, an advanced segment to set these up, and we understand the different channels that are there. So I set up my, my advanced segment to show a source of Twitters, YouTube, Dig versus Facebook. And we can understand on all the reports that come through how those different channel comparisons come for not just visits, but revenue. I mean, look and see large disparities in revenue, transactions, average value of those transactions, conversion rates, and then of course being able to plot all those down visually and understand the difference of those visually. So advanced segments and uh, sources of social traffic are, are a fantastic combination on these two. To really understand which of these channels are driving high quality traffic, high volume traffic, highly converting traffic, and valuable from an economic standpoint. But when we really talk about segmentation, we kind of run into trouble. Because again, we talk about how the, the user interface hasn't quite caught up with it. The ability to track hasn't quite done it. Um, it was about a year and a half ago, uh, Dave Booth and I sat down trying to figure out this idea when people said, well, you can't track like buttons in Google Analytics. And so we sat down and kind of dug through some of the FBML code and some of the event listeners and tried to figure out how to do this. So we actually uh, put together some code that would be able to, to pull into that event listener and, and pull this back and posted this up here. Now, not surprisingly, this is the, uh, the, the blog post that got the most likes on our entire blog was the one on how to track the like button as people were clearly trying to figure that out as well who were interested in social media. And the idea here is to, was that it's kind of a precursor to what the track social was where we used events to pull that out instead of the track social and pushed it in via events. If we look up in the event tracking categories here, Facebook plus like, and then you could actually see which of those particular pages was driving those like events. Now the reason I bring this up is, uh, is, is not to, to uh, toot my own horn, or at least not totally. Uh, but to push the idea of uh, one thing you can do with these events that you still can't quite do on the other side is the ability to put advanced segments on there. So if I want to be able to segment out the people who are, are engaged in this and who are doing these and, and run my standard advanced segments, I can do that on events. But I still can't, I can't quite do that on track social yet. So if you are interested in being able to do advanced segmentation on these ones, then you're still probably going to want to push those as events as well as the specific track social ones. Interface hasn't quite caught up uh, there yet. And so for us, where we do a lot of advanced segmentation on these particular users, uh, events can still be uh, a useful way to do that. You can also send both. Uh, certainly kind of future-proof yourself a little bit for when those reports start to uh, come around. But there's a value still in the event side of things. Uh, if you want to do it that way, I've got a link down here that goes to that blog post, but it's exactly, essentially the same way that we just looked at doing it, is instead of calling track social, we're just going to call track event. <laughs>